when somebody would come up to me and talk to me about, you know, what about life or just any any sort of questions about myself, and um, in a in a formal situation or psychologists, psychiatrists, um, whatever, I didn't care about telling them about my passions or anything like that. My my main focus was on my mental health and how I was suffering and how I was suffering. I was I was suffering immensely. Um, sorry. Boo! Hello, what's up, people? I've got a hood on today. Should I keep it on? I don't think so. Doesn't really go with my vibe, does it? Yo, I like weed and gangsters and cigarettes and oh yeah this all, all i'll be for life you know what i mean oh yeah i love being in the hood with the gangsters we're we killing each other and getting those drugs off each other you know what i mean yeah yeah that's all i live for mate that's my narrative that's my narrative mate apologies for that guys it's a very poorly drawn sketch as you can probably tell i'm a little bit bored from doing some work no idea why you would know that but Maybe I just think that everybody is me. What am I talking about? <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome back to another video. Today, I have got my camera propped up. So I'm not constantly moving it about. And I'm moving about now, so I'm kind of defeating the purpose. So, oh, it's on an angle. Stick! Stick! Hello! So! Start moving. Today we are talking about your narrative. Now, you may be thinking when I say narrative, like, as a narrator for a story or something like that, or if you are um, somewhat familiar with that word, a narrative is sort of the the life story that you you give to yourself when you think of yourself and where you've come from. If you were to write down your experiences and stuff, that would be your your narrative. I could be completely wrong with this, but this is how I um, how I picture what a narrative is. For example, um, if you were to say, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up in the back streets of California or something, and I that was I had a mum who was a bit abusive, and I don't know why I'm going down this path so quickly. I'm sorry. You get what I'm talking about. Narratives are the story that you tell yourself and the story that you tell to others um, that make up a significant part of your personality and what you do. Is the draft coming? And these narratives can be very important because they shape who you are, they shape most of the things that you do because you, you take them as very significant, significant parts of your life. One of the issues with growing up is you're under the, the uh, preconception that you have a personality or you have some, someone that you are, that you truly are. Obviously that's one way of taking it. My experience with life and trying to find out who I was. It didn't come from finding who I was. It more more came from making myself what I wanted to be. One of the pitfalls that you get from having mental health conditions, having depression, um, having anxiety, having any kind of negative thing in your life is that you make that a very big part of your story and it, you make it a very significant part of your story. The problem with that is that if those things are very negative and they impact your personality in a, in a very negative way, negative, negative, and you don't like it, you, you, you won't change it unless you, you have this, you know, the revelation that you, you are in the ability to, you know, change your person and change who you are. So this, this topic kind of comes into the, the whole personal growth, self-growth kind of thing that's, that's going a lot, around a lot, and it's a very positive thing because changing your narrative can be a very important step in overcoming some mental health conditions. The difficulty with changing your narrative is that 
the things that you have in your life that are significant and they have had a, a very big effect on you, it's very hard to let go of those things. You can feel like if you let go of them, then they're not going to mean anything anymore. So if you had some bad experience, you you tried, you were you were addicted to drugs, or you know you tried to kill yourself or something, that part of your life would be a very integral part of you and you, you don't really want to let go of it because you feel like it pushes down the importance of it and that can be one of the issues with the whole uh, personal growth thing. I'm here to tell you today that you don't need to change any of that. You can keep those significant parts of your life in your life. You don't have to forget about them because they are important and if you were to deny those kind of things then you know, you're basically just denying a large part of your life and a large part of who you are. I'm here today to give you a bit of insight into my life and how I change my narrative or I'm in the process of changing my nar narrative. And hopefully give you a bit of inspiration if you are struggling with overcoming depression, mental health, any kind of negative life experiences that you had when you were a kid or had when you were in, an in adulthood as well and trying to give you a bit of a new perspective on how to deal with those kind of things. So, when I was younger, my... I had a lot of... As far as I can remember, when I was about 13, 14, when I started to actually live life away from my Nintendo DS, away from any kind of games console, my narrative was a bit dark. I took a lot of my own personality traits and tied them in and tried to emphasize them and those those personality traits came from my negative experience with experiences with people um, in relationships uh, with depression with anxiety and and autism as well so I basically lived my life in the assumed role that I took to myself which was being a victim um, and being a victim is a very easy thing to slip into because it's hard to admit sometimes, especially if you have a large ego like myself, that you are capable of making mistakes and you are capable of, you know, overcompensating your opinion over other people and just completely ignoring the whole, the whole story. Talking about story, I've completely lost it. One sec, I'll find it again. <laughs> Basically, in my head for most of my childhood, up until I was about 16 or 17, my narrative was, my, I saw my future not as something spectacular or happy. I saw my future as pretty a pretty dark place. I was sort of trying to... It sounds really horrible saying it on camera and I want to be as truthful with you guys as possible because I value a lot of a lot of a lot of you like I value you all and I'm sure you value me being truthful but a lot of a lot of my my life especially when I was younger I was I was expecting that I was going to kill myself and um, and I tried multiple times over the a few years and I expected when I reached adulthood and I made a decision about it and I knew how to do it then um, I would do it so with some of the self-sabotaging things that I would do is trying to make myself lonely try and isolate myself you know be off or mean with friends and family and relationships in order to try and fulfill that narrative that I had in my head which is obviously not a great thing but when I was that age, I, I, did, I didn't care. When somebody would come up to me and talk to me about, you know, what, about life or just any, any sort of questions about myself um, in, a, in a formal situation or psychologists, psychiatrists, um, whatever, I didn't care about telling them about my passions or anything like that. My, my main focus was on my mental health and how I was suffering and how I was suffering. I was I was suffering immensely. Um, sorry, but the point is is that 
I was not doing it any good because I had already made up in my mind that I was going to do it. Fast forward maybe a year or two, um, between maybe the age of 18 and now, I've sort of made myself get over that whole victim, sorry, that whole victim thing. Get over the whole expecting to be dead and expecting to have a, you know, a big media board come it's like this person with autism suffering with depression has killed themselves or something like that. Um, I've given that up. My my new narrative, my, my honest narrative these days is that I want to help people. Um, I've I've become a bit more accustomed to accepting that people can be similar to me, which is something that I struggled with because I didn't, especially as a kid, I didn't feel like I could connect with anybody. Even like my relationships, my, my my family, my friends. I I always just had this thought in the back in my back of the head that I feel like I'm pretending to have these connections to some degree. And once I got down to it and I was on my own, I could go back into my own world of just, you know, being completely alone, which is how I felt most of the time. Once I tried to hell is that? Once I tried to connect with people and I actually felt like I am sort of similar to other people, I thought about it a lot more and a lot of my thoughts started to become less about the pain that I was going through and more about the pain that, you know, other people could have because if people can be like me, then obviously people can experience maybe the same amount of emotions that I felt when I was a kid and same emotions that I feel uh, nowadays as well. That was one of the big, like the really big steps that I had to take. I did a lot of stuff. I had, I, I forced myself to not conform, but I forced myself to be a part of a group and it was very, very difficult for a, a long time. I could not, it was, it was stressful and I felt like I wanted to separate myself and establish myself as a, a singular, singular person again. Maybe so that I could feel important or something. Um, but then after a while, it started getting better. I started actually feeling like I was similar to the other people in the group. And I talked to them a bit about my experiences and they could relate to it on, on some level or they could at least say that they sort of understand but obviously don't fully understand which is obvious it is one of the best ways to deal with this kind of stuff especially if you haven't experienced it that really helped me a lot so that was the first step in my changing my narrative the second step was I I, I put all my on mentally I put all my values on the table I wanted to find out what kind of person I am and what I wanted. I had my dreams of being popular and, and successful. I had my dreams of people understanding me. And the third one was I had dreams of one day being able to help people. And that, that was, it didn't really become apparent to me about how much that was important to me until I started actively trying to help people. Once I started helping people, and you know, you could argue it's not helping people, but once I started trying to make these YouTube videos, I started promoting myself as an autistic athlete, trying to raise awareness for it, getting involved with my university, trying to do all that, that kind of stuff. I started to really feel like that had a positive impact on myself. Now, one of the pitfalls that I had with that was that I find it very hard to justify doing something for other people or rather than I just do things good for other people so that I feel good. Um, and that, that's, one of the, that's one of the difficult things, I'm not going to go into it too much, but that's like one of the, one of the things that I struggle with even now, to be honest. Um, I'll let you know when I've sorted that out. 
but definitely like as soon as I accepted that that was going to be my thing that was my main core value I just wanted I wanted to turn my negativity and my horrible past and put it into something that can actually help people and I started writing a book I started making notes on philosophy on self-help on autism on mental health trying to rationalize some of the thoughts that I had and trying to find ways of communicating between autistics and neurotypicals and I've got a lot in the in the back ridders ready to ready to go out as soon as I've got this book sorted out and all together and um, it's all gonna be it's gonna gonna be out there and you know maybe it'll lead to good things maybe it won't but hopefully it'll help somebody so at this point I have my narrative in my head my narrative is that I was once a person who was depressed and was victimized I victimized myself and now I'm somebody else. I'm the older person, the older me. Not a different person, but it's, it's easy to think of the older me as, as a different person. I don't really feel like I'm that different, personally. Person, 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 person. But it does help. And once you make that distinguish, that, that choice to put that person away in the drawer, take it out a few times for self-reflection, show yourself how, how well you're doing and what kind of positive changes you have, but you, you put it away and you, you don't, you don't want to touch it. You want to make sure that once you've established this new positive thing, depending on what values you, you take, take to heart, you know, it doesn't have to be helping people, it could be creating. It could be, you know, it could be uh, doing science just for the reason of progressing knowledge and the society. It's, it can be anything. You could be, gro you could be helping animals. You could be growing vegetables and eating them in your backyard. Well, I mean, not eating them in your backyard, but <laughs> I'm just imagining this like weird version of myself eating carrots in the back garden. You get the point. It's really important to make this this distinguish disquin, disquin, this distinguishment between what's happened to you and what you choose to be. That's the main point. If you can do that, you'll be golden. So just to wrap up this video, accept what's happened in your past. Don't dismiss it as something that's not not happened. Try and ignore it. Accept that it's happened and accept the ways that you deal with it and try and move on to something that more fits with the values that you actually have. The values that you, your logical brain and you, you as a person that you want to be a part of your personality and that you want to move on with in the future. I really do appreciate everybody. I know I say this in a lot of the videos and a lot in this video as well, but I really do appreciate all of you guys by watching these videos like I don't even care that I'm not making any money off this because the new YouTube thingy majiggy um, I wasn't making that much anyway. Uh, all of this is just me talking to a camera, maybe getting a bit of catharsis out, trying to put together my opinions in, in voice, trying to communicate it and also like I really enjoy helping and I really enjoy giving people something to think about um, so that you can help other people you know, deal with some really horrible things that can go on in life. I love you guys so much. You are my lifeline. Just any comments, like, they always just give me a smile. I really love just reading them and commenting on them. And I hope I can keep that going for as long as I can. Um, and then another another side of me is also, I want to be famous, but it might be a few few years or so until that happens. But anyway. Love you guys, you're golden. Make sure to like and subscribe. I told myself I wouldn't do that. I told myself I wouldn't do it. So forget that. Put your comments down in the, in the comment section. Tell me about your experiences. Tell me what you think of the video. You like it, you hate it. You're eating some chips right now. I don't know what some people feel like sharing with other people. It's, um, 
abysmal to me. And I'll see you in the next video. I don't know how to end these things.